Hello and welcome to a special episode of 420 Grams here on newsclick.in. We have with us the man who was the star of India's recent historic nil-nil draw against the Asian champions Qatar in Doha on September 10th. Uh, he also captained the side for that game. Gurpreet Singh Sandhu is with us, uh, the goalkeeper, the number one choice goalkeeper for both India as well as Bangalore FC. Uh, great to have you on the show. It's the first time, bye. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here, bye. It's a pleasure. How are you doing, man? How are things going? How has the recent uh, stint with the national team been and how excited are you to be back in the flow of the next season? Uh, well, those are a lot of questions. But uh, <laughs> I'm doing well. Uh, I was a little bit tired after you know the travel and everything, but uh, really happy to join uh, the club again and really happy to meet all of the boys and get back uh, into that set up uh, with the club you know it has been a while to be honest um, so it's good to see everyone back and uh, start working again with the club we have some new faces as well uh, in uh, talented players like Rafael is there young talent in Ashik uh, probably one of the best uh, young keepers in Prabhsukhan Gil you know and a uh, legend of the club Eugene, uh, Eugene is back so a lot of uh, exciting uh, things happening in the club new faces uh, it's it's good to have that fresh energy around. So just trying to enjoy it uh, with everyone and make sure that you know this one month, one and a half month is injury free and everyone is ready for the league. And yeah, I mean uh, on the other side with the national team, uh, it was you know sweet and sour. You know losing the first game at home, it wasn't exactly something that we wanted. <clears throat> but uh, kudos to the boys. Uh, to get back out there uh, against Qatar and uh, getting that result, man. Because it's very hard to bounce back when uh, there are least expectations, uh, you know, regarding the performance and the result. And uh, getting that uh, clean sheet and uh, point against the best team in uh, Asia right now uh, was phenomenal. And, you know, just trying to build on that because it's very important to have that consistency now because we have shown ourselves that uh, how much we are capable of uh, when it comes to facing uh, stronger teams and uh, now when we face you know uh, Bangladesh and Afghanistan which will be uh, not easy uh, many people might think it's easy but it won't be that easy so we just need to be a bit more like sharp in our approach uh, when we see those guys on the pitch so yeah, a couple of things just leading from from where you left off. Uh, firstly, even in the national setup now, there's a lot that's been happening over the past few months with the new sort of backroom staff coming in, uh, the new head coach. Obviously, the, you have a new yeah. goalkeeping coach who you've spoken very highly of. Uh, yeah. So let's just start there. Actually, Gurpreet, uh, how much of a difference has the new backroom staff made? in terms of the attitude as well as uh, the tactical way in which the national st national team is playing and the, the way in which we saw you guys play the last two games? It, it has been a huge role, man. Like, uh, it's just been four months. We shouldn't forget that. And within these four months, uh, the amount of progression uh, each individual has made in terms of uh, taking care of themselves uh, physically, and uh, getting stronger mentally uh, has been uh, paramount. Uh, and maybe the players who haven't uh, been able to do that, unfortunately, uh, don't join the camp again. But the boys who learn and keep going and uh, do it uh, are called once again in the camp. Uh, the backroom staff uh, is very, very experienced. Uh, we have uh, Professor Luca, uh, who's uh, the physical trainer, highly experienced guy and uh, knows what he's doing. And, you know, uh, he can probably get you in shape as well if you give time. <laughs> uh, it has been good so far, uh, learning a lot from them. Um, it's just that we need more time. You know, it's as I said, it's just been four months. I think uh, with time, we learn more and, uh, you know, uh, try to enhance our performance and try to get uh, as close as we can to our best selves and, you know, potential-wise as well. 
Yeah, if you can add a little bit more about the mental side of things, Gurpreet, because like now over the past <clears throat> almost 10 years that you've been with the senior national team and it has almost been that long. Uh, Can't believe me. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty unbelievable. So th that's how quickly the time is going past and how quickly also yeah. things are developing on the football front. I mean, when, when you started out, things were completely different in terms of the structure of both the domestic uh, football as well as the national team. So, from a mental point of view, what is sort of making you guys come together so much as a unit? You know, also, I mean, we keep uh, mentioning Sunil because he is that vital to the national team. Having him missing for a game as big as the Qatar game and yet going out and playing the full 90 minutes, 94 minutes like you guys did. Uh, what is the sort of mental bits that you're getting now that are different or or helping you guys sort of step it up? See, it's a very interesting question and the answer to it is very lengthy uh, because things have changed uh, drastically in the last 10 years. You know, I have been lucky enough to experience that. Uh, one of the big differences uh, that we have in the national team is that uh, we have new faces, fresh faces, and uh, people that uh, who haven't been with the national team for the last 10 years. Only two players are there, you know, two, maximum three, if uh, JJ comes. And uh, that uh, gives you a huge uh, opportunity as a player when you're young to learn so much and bring in what you have learned and what I have seen that uh, the amount of attention paid uh, on stuff which happens outside the field is so huge uh, that it brings the team together. You know, you talk about uh, how to eat, how to sleep. People go on YouTube and uh, search about, uh, you know, stuff they can do individually to get better. So that uh, focus towards becoming a great individual, in the, uh, best of themselves, is uh, something that is there in the team right now, which I think wasn't there uh, 10 years ago when I was there in the team. So that progression mentally has been, uh, has been there. Uh, and uh, so watching from outside, uh, one of the things that a lot of us or some of us have commented on about your game personally is uh, the impact of the number of games, competitive games that you get to play mm. and how that leads into your decision making, particularly when you're in such a critical position as that of a goalkeeper where, I mean, set pieces or anything like that, your decision making when you come off the line to grab a corner or whatever it is, is critically important to what happens uh, in that sort of chunk of the pitch. And in in the game against Qatar, again, you didn't put a foot wrong. And you could see that the confidence in you when you were coming out to grab those corners, etc. was whether you were punching it or, or catching the ball. It seemed like there's an up in your sort of uh, thought process as well as your confidence levels. So, is the is Rogic, the goalkeeping coach, doing something differently for you as well as the other keepers in the national setup? See, in terms of training, uh, it is really good because he's come from a level uh, where we all want to go, and uh, the training is very demanding. And he's also a very demanding guy. Wants uh, you to do your best in every single session. Uh, and when it comes to goalkeeping, uh, I think it's all about experience. Like for me now, uh, I have played enough games that I know that uh, I can trust on my anticipation and go for a certain ball or not. Uh, but games do help a lot. Uh, I think I was good enough in Qatar only because uh, I got to play those 90 minutes before uh, against Oman because it was kind of getting the rust off uh, that we had by not playing enough games before the Oman game. So, I think uh, the more games you play, uh, it's better. And uh, I think I was talking to one of uh, my friends 
uh, Joe Morrison, you might know, and he was talking about this uh, with me that uh, if you look at all the goalkeepers uh, or any players outside India or maybe in Europe, by the time uh, they are 21, they have already played so many games, you know, that they uh, already have done those mistakes that we do at the age of uh, 24, 25, because we haven't got that much of game time uh, as kids. So that's why you see players like Ansu Fati scoring and uh, assisting uh, in the Barcelona jersey. It's all about uh, having that game time and that experience at a very young age so that you do all your mistakes and then by the time you're 21, 22, you're ready to play at a high level. That's what implies for us as well. So, how, how do you think this will pan out? And uh, you guys have now, some of you senior players, yourself, Sandesh, you've come out and talked about this issue with game, uh, with the number of competitive fixtures. In your opinion, what is, a, what is an ideal way to achieve this sort of a structure where you're getting 35, 40 games, competitive games every year? See, it's, it's a very complicated situation. And I, I know that people are working on it. And it's difficult uh, to do it, you know, in a snap because uh, there might be like previous commitments or something like that. But uh, I'm not in a position to tell people what to do. I'm pretty sure that they know it already because Indian football used to have that many games before in the past. So, I mean, people know the insights, just uh, uh, how to achieve that. How to put it together, basically. Coming back, I just want to talk a little bit about some of these younger players in the national setup, particularly. Um, I, are you thinking, or when you see it from, from your perspective, are they coming into, like, some of those, you know, the either it's technical aspects of training or the fact that at age group levels, they, they are getting more and more games increasingly. At least, there is something Youth leagues are happening. Bahar bhi jane ko milta hai, aap national team ke saath hai. Yeah. Toh, plus coaching is of a much higher standard, I, I think, right now. At least it's similar to what happens elsewhere in the world. So, so these things are being achieved. How do you look at it, these young boys who come in, whether it's Narendra or Amarjeet or uh, even Manveer or, and these guys? It's amazing, man. The more talent you have at your disposal, uh, it's better. I mean, I'm very, very happy from what they have experienced in the past two years, three years uh, in the junior setups. And that's just the beginning. You know, if it happens uh, for a long time, we'll have uh, many more players, uh, many more young talents which come through the ranks. And it's all about uh, giving it time because these players are good enough. You know, what we were at 16, they are way beyond uh, that level. You know, they, they have more awareness, they are good with the ball, confident with the ball, not scared to play. You know, look at Amajit, look at Vendor, you know, all these players, uh, you can't imagine uh, like a player like me playing for India at uh, the age of 17. You know, we weren't that good enough back then. And now you have players who are 17, 18, breaking into the national team. So that shows that if you trust in the process of uh, grooming young talent and giving them enough resources, uh, you have uh, players at your disposal. Yeah. And this is something you've said actually over, uh, it's quite remarkable, but you've said it uh, to me at least a number of times, whether it was before you went off to Norway or yes. while you were there or even after coming back that her has a right time hota hai and if you, uh, if you maintain or if you stay patient then and trust in the process, then things happen. Uh, so. Trust in the process is is superb and we're seeing it happen in the short run here very quickly. What sort of, but I'm sure some of these younger guys, because you've gone and played in Europe, Europa uh, League and all of that, younger guys must be asking you, yeah, ki, what is the way forward? What is the answer? I mean, like, how important is it for young Indians to get out, see more, play in different parts of the world, learn from there and then perhaps yeah. come back? Paramount. The importance of that is uh, uncomparable uh, 
to what they get in India. Uh, no doubt we are progressing, but uh, if you look at, especially just the Asian countries, all the best players are playing, you know, outside of their countries and uh, in the best leagues of the world, because because for a reason, you know. And I mean, it depends on person to person. Uh, some people at a young age want to play more, want to earn more, especially with uh, the high paying uh, offers, uh, you know. All flowing around in uh, in India right now. So it, I understand it's difficult. Uh, circumstances are difficult. But for me personally, if you're 16, 17, 18, and you have an opportunity to go outside, sit on a reserve bench, train with the reserve team, day day out, you should do it because it'll make you a different player. You know, I wish I went there at the age of 16. You know, Chetri Bhai tells me all the time he wishes he went at 16. Because we know what happens, you know, once you play. You won't get to play, but uh, you learn so much. You learn so much, yeah. So, uh, do you see guys who, I mean, who have the potential to get sort of reserve team squads, uh, spots? Of course, without a doubt, without a doubt. If I can, if I can make, that's what I... Uh, give as an example, if I can make it, people are good enough, man, over here who can go there and fight for a position. It's just about the uh, mentality to do it and if you want it. Because uh, if a medium talent like me can go into it, a highly talented player, uh, example, I'm just giving an example like Amar can do it. I like how modestly you're saying also that you're a medium talented player. <laughs> with some gift. Why it's the truth. <laughs> natural <laughs> hard work and natural kya kehte hai, attributes. Huh? Basically, you're saying it's down to luck. It's not that much. It's talent. Luck, hoga. <laughs> hard work. Hoga. Fair enough. So, uh, coming to the, the club squad, yeah, and of course, the one of the most successful franchises, new, t- new clubs in the country. Uh, how are you guys prepping for the upcoming season how, and like sort of what, anything you're doing differently this time round? I don't think so. I mean, uh, what our coach has said from day one is that we are not uh, going to go complacent. Yes, we won, but uh, that doesn't change anything. The mentality of the club has been uh, to start from zero, start from scratch and uh, try to reach the playoffs in the ISL and then, you know, see what happens in those knockout games. But for me as a player, I know that uh, if we are able to achieve that consistency that we had last year, we'll, you know, we have more chances of doing better. So, as a team, uh, the most difficult thing is consistency and repetition. Champions team and uh, not champions team, that's the difference. You know, they're consistent and some not. Uh, one last question, of course, you, I mean, you are not in a position to really say much on this, except that from a fan's perspective, over the past few years, Bangalore have built up yeah. a pretty great sort of community around the club. And a lot of that community action is based at the Kantirwa Stadium where your home games happen. Uh, with this sort of ongoing a tussle for the ground itself, for the use of the stadium between Bangalore FC and the other people, the SAI athletes that use the stadium. Uh, if you have to move a lot of people, then how much of a difference do you have as a club that you have to make and build? See, it will make a huge difference. You can't uh, close your eyes and be like, yaar kuch nahi farak nahi hota. We have to address the elephant in the room. Of course, it's going to make a huge difference if Bangalore is not playing in Bangalore. But we understand the circumstances and uh, if it's not in our control, then we we'll have to look at the other option and still do the job. You know, that's what a professional has to do. Uh, the de- decision is yet to come. So we just need to, you know, have. Uh, our fingers crossed and let's see what happens. Fair enough, bhai. I think on that note, we'll wrap it up. 
Thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show and we will keep Sahil bothering bhai, you. I am very impressed with uh, how I spoke. Yeah. The English it has got better. Much better. <laughs> with time as so as about 10 years ago. As all things do with time. Of course. Yeah. Of course, bhai. Just like a beard. <laughs> Thanks for thanks for taking the time, yeah, Gurpreet. Thank you, and we'll good luck for the rest of preseason. And of course, we'll see you in uh, Calcutta for the game against Bangladesh on the fifteenth of next month. Thank you, bhai. Thank you. Good Just make job. sure everything recorded, huh? Everything is recorded, inshallah. Thanks, brother. Take care. <laughs> Thank you, bhai. Chat Take soon. Care. Bye, bye.